What's up YouTube? This is Lucidate to one here and today I'm going to show you how to downgrade from iOS 5 or any other iOS for that matter using a Mac. So I have made this video previously before but it was about a year ago and I figured I would remake this video because my quality has improved. So enough of me blabbling, let's go ahead and get started. So what we need for this is first, your device must have SSH blobs. No matter what you're doing, your device has to have SSH blobs in order to downgrade, unless you have an iPhone 3GS downgrading to 4.1, or an iPod Touch 2G, or an iPhone 3G. Those are the only devices that do not require SSH blobs. Any device downgrading from iOS 5, aside from the iPhone 3GS, does need SHSH blobs. So aside from the SHSH blobs, you will also need your device itself, your USB to 30 pin dock connector cable, your Mac, and of course the IPSW file that you want to downgrade to. In this example, I will be downgrading to iOS 4.1. So what I have done here is I have put my iOS 4.1 file on my desktop right here, which I will need later in the process. If you need an IPSW file, there will be a link in the video description with a site that has most IPSW files. If not, you can go ahead and do a Google search for the IPSW file you want. Or if you have IPSW downloaded like I have here, you can go ahead and launch it and select the IPSW for your device. For example, if I have the iPad 2, I can go ahead and I click iPad 2 and then click 4.3.3 to download that firmware. So enough of that, what we need to do first is back up your device. So I assume that since you're downgrading, you obviously want to preserve your files on your device. So in order to do that, what you have to do is when your device is, in a, is plugged into iTunes, go ahead and right click on your device, choose backup and iTunes will back it up. While it's doing that, you can download the IPSW file that I just mentioned before, and I'm gonna come back to you guys when this is done. All right guys, so now, that this is done, we can go ahead and modify your host file to tell iTunes that we are downgrading your device. If we go ahead and just click the restore button now, it's just going to tell you to go to the newest version of iOS. However, we don't want to do that. Now, there are a few ways to do this. The first one is with Tiny Umbrella. However, Tiny Umbrella is a bit unstable, so I chose not to use Tiny Umbrella for this tutorial. Instead, we're going to be using Terminal to modify the host file. So I've made a little document in text edit here and all this stuff will be pasted in the video description for your convenience. But what you have to do is go ahead and open up terminal. I'm just going to use spotlight for now. Mine will open up just like so. And then you're going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash hosts. It's going to ask you for your password so just go ahead and type that in. And when you are successful, you will see this window here. And what we have to do is paste in two IP addresses. Now, before we go ahead and do that, I just want to point out that if you're running Mac OS X Lion, this is the only way to access the host file. If you're running Mac OS X Snow Leopard or Leopard or any other previous version, what you have to do is type in sudo nano, sudo nano slash private slash etc slash host. It's just a bit of a different way. However, the windows will look the same. If you do have line and you want to try typing this, go ahead and do so. It may or may not work. I have tried it once and it has worked, but I've tried it another time and it hasn't worked, but you guys don't care. So what we have to do is go ahead and copy and paste these two IP addresses into the host file. All we have to do is press Command C and then bring the cursor down to the bottom of the host file using the directional arrow keys. Go ahead and make a new line and then press Command V just like so. And then you have to press Control X and you will see this bar on the bottom. Press Y for yes, and then press enter, and it will save. Now, before we go ahead and quit terminal, what we have to do is flush the cache. So go ahead and copy and paste this command into the command line, just like so. Command V, press enter, you will see that, and then you are done with terminal. We can go ahead and quit it. So after that, you can go ahead and just minimize that. And we have to put our device into DFU mode, not recovery mode. There is a difference, otherwise you will get error 20. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch to my camera right now. So in order to put your device into DFU mode, what you have to do is first power it off. So I'm just going to do so right now. Slide the power off, just like so. Make sure we're in focus here. And then once it's done powering off, you have to hold the sleep button for three seconds. 
then hold the home button for 10 the home and sleep button for 10 seconds then release the sleep button but continue to hold the home button until we get a message in itunes so let's go ahead and do that now one two three and then home and sleep for about 10 seconds i'm just going to count this in my head because it's kind of hard to do this while on camera and then release the sleep button but continue to hold the home button and this should take about 15 seconds. We're going to see a message in iTunes pop up. And there we go. There's the message that we're looking for. And you are successfully into DFU mode. You will, know, you will note that if the screen is black, that means that you are in DFU mode. However, if the screen has the Connect to iTunes logo, that means that you are in recovery mode, which is what we don't want. So go ahead and press enter to dismiss that message. And then what we have to do is option click the restore button in order to access our IPSW that we download. So go ahead and press and hold the option key while clicking the restore button at the same time. And there we go. Just like so, you should see this dialog box come up. And we're going to go ahead and navigate to our IPSW that we downloaded as mentioned previously in the video. So go ahead and click on your desktop. That's where I save mine. Click on the file and then press open. And now you will see it will, it's going to ask you if you want to restore your device. You're just going to go ahead and press yes. And then I'm going to come back to you guys when this process is complete. All right, guys. So once that process is complete, you will see your device has successfully been downgraded. If you get any errors, you could check out this video right here, or it will be in the video description, which fixes most errors, or this video here, which fixes error 20 and error 1600. So anyway, guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to favorite, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.